Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to St. Philip the Deacon. Uh, we're very glad to have you here for the final midweek organ concert in our July organ concert series, and a special welcome also to those of you joining us remotely. We're always grateful for your presence. Uh, I believe the bulletin for today's uh, program is at spdlc.org slash livestream. And again, welcome to all of you who are here in person as well. A few quick, uh, by the way, I'm Pastor Tim Westermeyer, the senior pastor here at St. Philip the Deacon. A few quick logistical things after today's recital. There will be a reception with cookies, so please join us for that. If I could also invite you all to silence your mobile devices before we begin so that they are not a distraction, that would be fabulous. Um, I will also point out that today's artist has not one or two, but I believe three different CDs available for purchase in our in narthex, including the one I'm holding, which is Sounds from the Sepulchre, Se Sepulchre uh, in Jerusalem, I believe, correct? And uh, I see Pastor Matheson is here. We've got a couple of trips, actually, to the Holy Land later this fall. Um, what else am I forgetting to say in terms of logistics? I think that's it in terms of logistics. Uh, just a quick word about our recitalist today. Uh, his full bio is on the back of your uh, program here. Uh, he went to um, the Purpose School for the Arts for high school. He went to St. John's for college and then went to Indiana University uh, for graduate work. He is a sought-after recitalist. He has held positions at a variety of churches uh, as an outstanding worship leader. And here at St. Philip the Deacon since last August, we have been thrilled to call him part of our family. He has been on our staff since then, uh, and you can hear him play uh, most weekends at all four of our worship services on Saturday night at 5.30 and three services on Sunday morning, three different styles of worship. Um, in a, I'm gonna welcome him in a second, but I also wanna say thank you to him for organizing all of the concerts we've been able to hear um, on our wonderful organ. You know, we are blessed here at St. Philip Deacon to have this beautiful sanctuary and to have made, thanks to many of our members, an incredible investment in an instrument that is not always supported by churches anymore. And on that front, if you want to leave a free will offering to continue to support it, <laughs> you are welcome to. Um, but it is a beautiful instrument, and, and we're grateful to Craig for organizing things, uh, concerts, and for being our recitalist today. Will you join me in welcoming Craig Winchester? Thank you so much for that welcome. I feel a little bit like, uh, well, I feel like I've been uh, sanctified or something. So thank you, <laughs> Pastor Westermeyer. And uh, by all means, do join us for worship Saturdays at 5.30 and then 3 on Sunday morning as well. Um, it's always a great message. And uh, as I said, I think in music for the Plymouth, or music in Plymouth, uh, you come for the music, but you stay for the cookies. That's a little bit true for today's recital, too. Uh, thank you all for coming. The first piece I'm going to play for you today is the, um, well, it's one of Johann Sebastian Bach's most famous pieces for the organ. Uh, you know, Johann Sebastian Bach really... He's the grandfather of the organ and probably the greatest composer that ever lived uh, who wrote for the instrument. This is his Toccata in F major. Uh, what Bach does in this piece, he probably wrote this early on in his years because it's a little bit showy. Not too showy, though, for a Lutheran church in Minnesota. Uh, what Bach does, though, in all of his genius, he, he tips his hat to the Trinity time and time again. The key signature is 3-8, so there we have a 3, which is a reference to the Trinity. He also does something in this piece that he doesn't do anywhere else. He takes a melody in F major and he plays it in the right hand. Then he plays it in the left hand. Then he takes the hands away altogether and plays it solo in the pedal. Uh, he does this twice. Uh, and then he adds a counter melody, so we have a melody, a counter melody, all hands and feet going at one time, and then he decides one more tip of the hat to the Holy Trinity. 
he does three trio sections within this toccata. And for those of you who are wondering, what's a trio? I will tell you a trio is a little bit like, um, a uh, little bit like jumping hopscotch, brushing your teeth, and maybe um, combing your hair all at the same time. So, box toccata in F major.
Thank you so much for your warm applause. Um, I'm really glad that's over too. <laughs> uh, so now we can have some fun, right? Those three trio sections are a little bit um, taxing and uh, you know, it's, I feel when I play that piece, I don't have to go to the gym that day with um, <laughs> using the full uh, compass of the pedal board all the way from low C all the way to high G. So where uh, one or two are gathered, I always feel like every time I'm at a church, if there's enough folks who um, show up, which I'm pleasantly surprised today, I invite you now, you have to, um, you know, show me what you're worth. And if you can take out your uh, beloved e ELW hymnal, this next setting, um, and I know that the composer of these variations is watching today. Um, I, I made a joke yesterday in the office that uh, this is an organic composer, or locally grown, as we like to have uh, locally grown music, and always new music, um, Christine Schultz, who's a composer out of Mankato, Minnesota, and a dear friend. I actually call her my star of Bethlehem because she works at Bethlehem Lutheran Church in Mankato, where I'm actually playing next week. And she wrote a really fabulous set of variations on the ash grove. So to get into the spirit of these variations, which I won't play all of them, I'm just gonna play a handful, otherwise we could be here a lot longer, especially with as much as I like to talk. If you were to take your hymnal and open it to 881, number 881, and that's Let All Things Now Living. And I was waiting to say if we'd play a hymn to see how many people showed up, because if it was only three of us, I'd feel like maybe that wouldn't go so well. But it looks like today you'll, pleas you'll, you'll surprise me. So you can sing along at home if you've got a hymnal, and if you don't have a hymnal, feel free to hum along. Um, we'll sing both stanzas of 881. I'll give you a little bit of an introduction, and uh, we'll go for it. And then you can sit back down and listen to the three variations by uh, Christine Schultz of Mankato, Minnesota. So please rise for this hymn, 881.
So kudos again to our Minnesota composers uh, uh, gang. Uh, we have some great music coming out of all sorts of uh, geographic locations in this state. And so thanks again, Christine Schultz, for your variations on the Ash Grove. It's always fun to play new music. And you got to hear some different sounds of the organ. This Shantz organ, which is made in Orville, Ohio, uh, they are stellar and their instruments stand true to all sorts of things that organists throw at them. One thing that I have really enjoyed hearing from the other recitalists on this series, every single one of the artists said, how blessed you are to be able to play an organ like this, which can play any kind of the repertoire, anything from Bach to Scheidemann to the French Romantic to contemporary, as well as the service music, which is really what this organ does best, is lead worship. But yet, it's not cheap. Tuners um, uh, cost a lot of money. Uh, we're very fortunate to have Brian Sullivan take care of the organ here, and we also have Stan Ragnus, who is a member and takes care of our piano. So the blessings are abundant. Uh, thank you also for your singing. I've never heard the Ash Grove sung with so much vigor, so uh, let's make that happen again. Uh, this uh, second, uh, these next two movements are from the Byzantine sketches, and um, that's a very famous uh, collection of pieces written by Henri Mulet. Uh, Henri Mulet was a French composer out of Paris. He had some demons in his life. Um, worked very hard at um, maintaining a, a church position. He, um, in fact, had a lot of writing, not just for organ, but chamber music and, and vocal. He was so hard on himself, though, that he oftentimes uh, would finish a composition and then destroy it. So most of what he wrote would go right into the incinerator or, you know, just not be out for public use. Thankfully, the Byzantine sketches we still have and these Byzantine sketches he wrote um, depicting uh, the Basilica of the Sacred Heart in Paris. So one of the movements might be the Rose Window, one might be the Crypt, one might be um, the Nave. So he wrote all of these beautiful compositions, and so it's a hefty piece. I think there's 12 uh, sets uh, of pieces in all. You're going to hear the very last two. You'll hear the Imparadisum, which showcases the very softest stops of the organ. You'll hear those from the choir division, which is over here on the side. And that, that's as soft as the organ will get. I also am throwing out to any of my piano students here, I'm using the two different kinds of bells on the organ twice. And for anybody that can tell me where those bells were used and what particular movement, there's a prize. Because, you know, <laughs> yeah. My piano studio is very prize motivated. The, the second one you're gonna hear is Thou Art the Rock, or it says, I mean, Tuas Petra is what it is um, in the language, but, uh, but the vernacular, uh, Thou Art the Rock, it's based on the Bible verse, uh, upon this rock, Peter built his church, uh, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Um, this toccata is difficult, but what I really like about it is um, the hands represent good. So everything that's going on good in the world, the right hand and the left hand are taking. They have a very persistent rhythm that they play, and contrasting that in the feet is bad or maybe the devil. I like to say, you know, it's good versus evil. I like to say God and evil. So throughout this last toccata, you're gonna hear this battle scene. And uh, I'd like to think that you can figure out who prevails in the end. Uh, so with that, we've got the last two movements in Paradisum and the toccata on Thou Art the Rock, which uses the full resources of the organ, including the 32-foot bombard reed in the pedal, which, um, is certainly likely to shake your pew. Thank you. <laughs> 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 